It's another time to come and review the open level written by dear Father and the Lord, Pastor here at the Boy, the General University of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Today is uh, Sunday, October 29th, year 2023. I wish you a happy Sunday, everyone out there. By the way, good day to you. Shall we pray together? Dear Father, we bless you for bringing us into this day. We ask, dear Father, that you be blessed this day for us. We ask, oh God, as we review your word together, you will be our teacher. And please, give us a better heart that lives a better life. At your appearance, so that we know message. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. One more time, good day to you. So today, we'll be looking at a topic that says, fasting is a weapon of war. Fasting is a weapon of war. We shall be reading 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3, as the memory verse, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Why did he do that? Fasting is a sign of humbling oneself in the sight of one makers. Now, three kings came against Jehoshaphat. That was a battle, that was a war. So what did he do? The fear of this battle came upon him, but he did something. He set himself to seek the Lord. May I establish that fasting brings you closer to God, especially if your way is right in the sight of the Father, because your spirit man is alive while your body is being, uh, is being put under, is being subjected. At that time, the spirit man is at a light. So he set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Everyone should fast. Everyone should fast. He proclaimed a fast. So fasting subjects your physical body, but your spiritual man is actually strengthened. Your spiritual man is actually empowered. Oftentimes when we fast, we have weakness in our physical body, but observe very well, the spiritual man is energized. Let's see another group of people that use fasting as a weapon of war. Start chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. Look at what the Bible says. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. I want to believe that you know the story of Esther. There was this man called Mordecai, and that was Esther's uncle. So there was also Amman. Amman was an officer of the king who actually expected Mordecai to bow to him. But Mordecai did not actually do so. He wouldn't bow to anybody except God. So Ammon decided to hang him and destroy the people, the Hebrew, completely. And don't forget, Esther was a Hebrew. So Mordecai was, uh, was an uncle to Esther. So Ammon got to the king to sign the death warrant of all Israelites. And this was strange all about that the particular time of the year, these people were to be destroyed. So when Mordecai heard of this decree from the king, what did he do? He went to Esther, who happened to be the queen, the wife of the king as at that time, then to ask for help, you know, and to tell Esther that Esther come. Who knows whether this is why you are on the throne at this time? If you think you are safe there, you know, and you see your people own people being perished, who knows maybe this is why God has brought you here. However, there's something you should know. Esther said, I can't go to the king unless he invites me. Because if you go without being invited, you will die. Especially if the king does not turn the scepter to you. So, what did Esther say? Esther told them that you are to go and fast for me. Fast for three days. Let's see what will happen. Fast for me and I'm going to go into the king. Esther said, myself and my maidens as well will fast. This was a battle of life. Because if something drastic was not done, the whole Hebrew will be destroyed and that will be it. So what did he do? They fasted. And you know what happened? Fasting changed death to life. Esther went into the king and as soon as the king saw Esther, he stretched forth his scepter 
and that signify life. Not only that alone, the king asked Esther, what are your requests? And he said, I am going to grant you unto the half of my kingdom. The king kept pestering Esther, asked for his request. Esther said, come to banquet and the whole thing continue, continue like that till the children of Hebrew had victory over Haman. Remember, Haman ended up being hung over the gallows that he has prepared for the man called Mordecai. Fasting has ability to change things. You may need to add fasting to your prayer. So, I want to beseech you, fasting is helpful. It's helpful spiritually, it's helpful physically. So when you fast, you get more than you ask for. By the time we get to Esther chapter 6, the king could not sleep because Mordecai has to be honored. Because some people have sought the face of God of heaven in place of fast and in place of prayer. Now, one thing that was so, that was so interesting about that story is that the one who was to kill Mordecai was the one who was proclaiming the honor. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. May your enemy that wants to molest you be the one that will be proclaiming God's glory in your life. Okay, may they be the carrier of your testimony in the name of Jesus. So by the time you get to Esther chapter 7, Esther chapter 8, the house of Haman was already given to the woman called Esther. That was a good one. That was a good one. Now, fasting coupled with prayer helped the Jews to be saved from the destruction. So fasting has its power. Some of us have been praying. You may need to add a little fasting to it. I mean, I encourage someone who has been fasting without praying. That is hunger strike. Anytime you fast, accompany me with prayer. So you may see, you could see from where we've read today, from the story of Jehoshaphat and from the story of Esther and the Hebrew, how fast is being used as a weapon of war. You may want to declare some fast too. May I pray for strength for you and God of heaven will hear you even as you pray in the name of Jesus. Our key point says, Fasting is a powerful weapon of warfare and vehicle of promotion. You may want to engage in it. God bless you. If you are there, you have not given your life to Christ. This is the high time to get it done. Let's pray to God. Say, Father, please come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. And if you have given your life to Christ, can you ask for strength from God? Say, strengthen me in a place of fast. Help me to be able to humble myself in your sight and to fast accordingly. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for your word you have revealed to us today. And we ask, O oh God, as we fast, O oh God, strengthen us. Strengthen our inner man. Hear us, O oh God, and give us victory over all the battles of life. Fight our battle for us and defend us, O oh God. Everyone out there yet to give their life to you, please save their soul and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, way of pride. Amen. Fasting doesn't kill, it strengthens. 